one of you out there was at PetSmart and saw these freebie care guides and uh, you sent them to my PO box for me to review, so I'm doing just that. If you want to send me something, maybe I'll incorporate it in a video, I'll link my PO box in the description, and we can start with leopard geckos. So we'll talk about the guides, critique them a bit, and just, just see how they are. See if they are actually trustworthy or not. Um, we've got getting to know your leopard gecko, and it just gives the basic rundown of stuff. So when it comes to pet stores, I'm very against buying from Petco and PetSmart, which I've talked about a lot. A quick rundown on Petco and PetSmart and similar stores. They basically bulk buy these animals from these massive distributors that sell them for just a couple dollars each when they buy them and they breed a ton of them. So many that they don't even care about the quality. As long as a few of them are good enough to ship off, they still make a very good profit. So a ton die before they even get to the store. Those that get to the store, oftentimes the stores don't have people uh, that know what they're doing, they don't have the right supplies, and just don't have any care standards. There are some good pet stores out there like Petco's and PetSmart's where the associates do care but they're rare and do not change where the animals come from. Now that we got that out of the way, we can see how they tell you to care for their animal. So uh, experience, beginner, yeah I can agree with that. Sometimes it'll be risky to say an animal is easy because people undercut the husbandry, but overall I think they are a beginner animal. Uh, size up to 10 inches, also true, they vary a lot in size. On average they live for 15 to 20 years. Now the average healthy one that's cared for properly, that's very true. Obviously there are those cases that don't live that long, that's why it's an average and not the exact amount of time that they live, but also the average reptile dies basically instantly when they're kept in captivity because so many people go in, impulse buy them, and don't know what they're doing. We all know this. This is not new stuff. Origin, they're from the Middle East, need a warm, dry environment with moist hiding where they may shed their skin. And, and we got a picture of the terrarium. We've got the geck in an enclosure. They got one of those lovely fake backgrounds. It's so beautiful. But obviously the first thing that you probably notice is that good old sand. I don't know what kind of sand that is, but we're about to- oh, it says right there. Let's not put it. Pretend you didn't see that. We'll get to that shortly, I'm sure. Uh, first off, we got A, the terrarium, B, the screen lid, no problem there. The UV, light, and bulb. Technically, you don't really need UV for leopard geckos, but I, get, I mean, it doesn't hurt. Um, however, I do think it hurts some albino morphs because they're a lot more sensitive and just seem uncomfortable with the lighting. Also, heat bulb. Personally, uh, we sell leopard geckos and we don't actually um, tend to approve of using heat lamps. They're a lot harder to regulate and leopard geckos really love the belly heat so when a rock warms up they'll chill on that but it's way easier to regulate it when it's a heat mat and it's also a lot more accurate to what they prefer and what has been proven to really help them digest their food and be the happiest. I mean it looks like there's no heat mat. Heat lamp can work but not a, not a huge deal. It's not terrible so far based on a, B, C, and D. E, we've got thermometers. There's a little hydrometer there and a thermostat or thermometer there. The problem is these just tell you the temperature of that one little spot. This tells you the humidity of this area. It doesn't actually help regulate it at all. Um, also, they're pretty inaccurate and those sticky ones are ridiculously sticky. Olive, my blue tongue skink, when I use those little sticky thermostats, or I keep saying thermostat because I'm used to that, but sticky thermometer and hydrometer, they oddly can come off, especially if the animal reaches for it or if a ball python can reach it, but they've also just fallen off for me. And the thing is it's so sticky that it stuck to her scales and it was extremely hard to get off and it actually ripped and damaged her. So she's fine now, it's years later, but uh, we also don't actually approve of people that use these. I've had multiple, like I've had one, I'll put them all, line them up. One will say 20% humidity, one will say 80% humidity. They're just, they're so cheap and worthless basically. So a thermostat however actually controls the temperature and if you get a reputable brand just look at like the top rated on Amazon and you get the idea there. So uh, no not allowed there and then UV I think is kind of dumb so I wouldn't do that and then heat lamp also I wouldn't actually do that either. Um, <laughs> then there's the basking site beneath the heat lamp which we also don't really like leopard geckos are they love to hide they love to just stay out of the way keep themselves safe and so I think they should be able to do that under an actual hide and not out in the open. So uh, that's also another reason to use heat mats instead of lamps. It's it's a lot just better overall. And G, of course, our favorite. We've got the calcium sand. I've done a lot of content talking about calcium sand. Another quick rundown. Basically, it's indigestible pieces of rock. However, the calcium ones are coated with calcium. 
believe it or not, and that calcium <laughs> almost encourages them to lick and eat that sand. The sand gets stuck in their gut and does not let anything pass. This leads to them bloating and building up with rocks, little tiny, just small rocks inside of them, and then they die. Calcium sand is just a meme at this point. I think it's kind of funny in a way that they still include this. I don't know why. They can push plenty of other items, and yet they still continually push the calcium sand. And unfortunately, companies I like, like Zoomed, sell it, so it's kind of annoying. Food dish, yeah, that works. Water dish, pretty good idea. Big enough for the pet to soak in. Um, yeah, just make sure they can't drown in that. Plants and decor, usually better. And a hide house. So interestingly, they talked about a moist hiding spot, but I don't know if they included it. So how do I set up the gecko terrarium? Maybe it'll tell us there. Uh, multiple leopard geckos can be housed together in a- wait, what? Multiple leopard geckos can be housed together in a 10 gallon terrarium. No more than three? Wait, is this supposed to be a 10 gallon? For reference, we do 20 gallons per gecko. Also, I just recently uploaded a video probably on building a gecko enclosure only out of TJ Maxx products just for fun. I talked about cohabbing them together a little bit, but I also have a full video you can watch. I've personally cohabbed four pairs of leopard geckos together, and although it's doable, it's just not worth the amount of effort that goes into doing it safely, and oftentimes geckos become very territorial. They've hurt each other, not like here, but a lot of geckos have hurt each other when housed together. They've killed each other. It's not epic. <laughs> Three and a ten gallon. We actually got, someone sent us I think four leopard geckos that they got from someone else and that person was keeping four and a five gallon to the point where they couldn't even, they were literally living on top of each other and a ten gallon is almost literally living on top of each other when it's three so I have to scratch this whole part out. I was hoping it wouldn't be god awful but that ruins the guide for me personally. I'm more upset over that than the calcium sand for some reason. I don't know. Use drop top carpet or calcium sand two to three inches deep. Don't know why that matters. For geckos under six inches, use drop top carpet. So basically they're saying that small geckos might get impacted, I think is what they're implying. With crusties, which we'll get to, we'll see if they talk about it, they do have a much higher risk of being impacted from anything, like even coconut fiber, when they're really tiny. Because their gut is tinier and it doesn't fit as much through. Change bedding monthly. Personally, if you if you have bioactive, you don't really need to change it. If you have reptile carpet, you have to wash it constantly and it's a pain. I used to use reptile carpet. It worked, but it's just, it's not really worth the effort to me. I'd rather just use paper towel than reptile carpet. Also, our favorites to use is laminate tile, which you can just pick up from Home Depot. It's like fake tiles that just stick on. Uh, it's what stands on. They're really easy and really nice. And then we've got place under, t oh, they do have an urgent heater, but it's not. Here, I'll draw it in for them. That's that's an iron tank heater. On the warm side, if necessary, also place a lamp. This is a little confusing. Honestly, if I was a new owner, I'd be a bit confused. So, because this only shows the lamp. This only says a lamp in the what you need. But then it says get a heater, under tank heater first, and then get a lamp. So legitimately, if I was setting this up, I would be a bit confused. Equip the habitat with two thermometers, one to measure temp, one to measure humidity. Mist your, gecko, mist your gecko every other day? It says right here, a dry environment, and then they said to mist your gecko every other day. I don't... Maybe they mixed up the crusty one? I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. The editor had some trouble and put the crusty care in a leopard gecko care. I make the mistake all the time. Yeah, all my crusties and leos are together. Anyway, give your gecko a rock and branch for hiding on the cool side, but no hiding on the warm side. Basically, they say the warm side should just be for basking, and then the cool side should just be for hiding, which doesn't really make any sense. Insects, they actually say gut loaded crickets, mealworms, and waxworms. They probably say that because they can sell more products to you. Uh, and then we've got dust insects with calcium supplement twice weekly. They don't mention multivitamins, which we recommend using, but I'm surprised they mentioned this at all. So I'm a little surprised. And then fresh clean water every day. Yeah, that works. Issues you might run into, contact a reptile vet or speak with a PetSmart associate. <laughs> If you notice the following symptoms, I assume that just means an employee. Most PetSmart employees, I'm sure there's plenty of you watching. I'm guessing most of them are there because they're dog lovers, cat lovers, or just need a job. And they might not know what to do if your leopard gecko has a swollen joint and is reluctant to move or has discharge from their eyes. Besides, most of the geckos at the PetSmarts and Petcos that I've seen have at least one of these. <laughs> so we've got runny droppings for more than two days, uh, decreased frequency in droppings, uh, hiding more than usual, 
increased basking time. I don't really get these two. The increased basking time and the hiding more than usual. To me, I'd be more concerned if they're constantly moving around and constantly trying to scratch on the side or whatever, because that means that they might be too hot or too cold or too humid or have something stressing them out. But if they're just hiding a bunch, that's what they do. They're geckos. I mean, sorry, but they're a little bit boring sometimes if they yeah, that's how they are. First need a 10 gallon, which will change to a 20. A screened lid. I mean, it's good to have a lid of any, like, just especially if you have other animals. And oftentimes animals are better climbers than you'd expect. So yeah, let's agree with the screen lid. Thermometers. No. Um, hiding spots. Yeah. Branches for climbing and hiding. I mean, hiding, yeah, climbing doesn't matter that much for geckos, but sure, why not? Sphagnum moss for the hiding spot. Did they actually mention the humid hide? humid hideout. They don't explain it here. Obviously this is just a little two-page thing, but I mean they're saying that this is vet assured, the standard for pet care, approved by vets, and for some reason it's circled in blue, like someone just, I just got sharpie on my desk. That's there forever. Um, <laughs> it'll probably come off with alcohol, but for some reason someone, they did it on all of it, they just have this blue scribble. Maybe they had a vet come in and just do this for a couple hours. And then we've got sphagnum moss for hiding. You can just use paper towel. I mean, it doesn't make a difference. Gecko food, crickets and worms. I mean, we use dubias and some worms, but okay, close enough. Crickets work too. And then calcium and vitamin powder, which they also mentioned vitamin powder here, but not inside the thing. So I'd say I'd give this, before seeing the, the size stuff, I'd give it like a six out of 10, honestly, because the only problem really was the calci sand and the thermostats and Okay, there were a couple problems, but once you take into account the size, I'd, I'd give it a 0 out of 10. Not even one point, but maybe the others will be better. And since this is taking a while, I think I'm just going to do the, crest, the the gecko ones today. And if you if you enjoyed the video, we can we can do the snake ones later. So next up, we've got the eyelash crested gecko. I don't know why they call it eyelash. I mean, I know that's kind of the name, but they could have just called it a crested gecko. That works too. Again, approved by PetSmart veterinarians. High climbing and low fuss. They're named for the distinct ridge above their eyes. Yeah, I've never heard someone actually say, I have an eyelash crested gecko. Technically, I guess that's what it is. Also, they consider it a beginner. Yeah, I'd say they're actually easier than leopard geckos. Then we've got up to 10 inches, if you include the tail, yeah. But it's possible they can live for more than 10 years. But yeah, they certainly can, if depending on how you're, you care for it. But it's also a living animal. They can get tumors and, and die suddenly and have issues, brain aneurysm, anything like that, so. Don't necessarily expect it, but hope for it and work towards it. Let's look at the picture. We've got the little little boy there. We can't forget his eyelashes. Very important. Um, we've got the terrarium lid, heat lamp, and daylight bulb. Blah blah blah. We'll just go through here and see what it says, and then I'll come back to this. I forgot to look at the temps on this one, but honestly, it's not bad. I'm fine with that. So they say day temp of 80 to 85. A lot of people just say room temperature. Obviously room temperature varies depending on the temperature of your room because my room probably isn't the same temperature as your room, but it is true that they really don't need crazy hot spots. And yeah, some people put lamps to get it up a little bit. So it really depends on the house. Eyelash, are they gonna say eyelash every time? They are. Eyelash crested geckos can live in groups, but do not house more than two males in a tank. I guess if you have a, a group of breeders, you could house m males together, but generally I think they are pretty territorial. Also, I should say I'm better with leopard gecko care than crusty care. I don't actually own any personal crusties. I've just cared for them while they're here. One gecko needs a 20 inch high, 20, 20 inch high, 20 gallon tank. I mean, yeah, for a single crusty gecko, I guess that works. I'd say at least like that medium exoterra. 20 gallons, something like that. Line it with reptile carpet or coconut fiber, moss or bark uh, bedding. Like I said previously, baby crusties are very susceptible to being impacted by anything. So I definitely wouldn't use loose substrate with the little tiny babies. And then we've got, yeah, I mean, usually if, if I'd want to set one up for like cool looks, I'd use moss. And then if I just want to set it up to rehab it, get it out quickly, just paper towel. So reptile carpet holds no humidity, at least paper towel you can spray. So I don't know why you use reptile carpet, but it does, it, it works if you have the right lid. Cause this has a screened lid, but sometimes it's better just to have a pretty solid lid and then just have a couple little holes in it. This is my description in case you didn't understand what I was saying. Cause this picture explains it to you a lot better. <laughs> I'd be a terrible team. Imagine me just like grading a test, like, okay, yep, uh-huh, yep, this looks good, okay, oh, you passed. And that's time for the next one. Everyone would 
pass in my class because I wouldn't understand any of the questions. Anyway, add a rock or wooden place for hiding and live or artificial branches for climbing. Yeah, makes sense. Eyelash, crested geckos. Require a temp gradient, a cool bottom, and a warm top. I mean, yeah, makes sense. Honestly, I don't have many problems with this one so far. Low wattage heat bulb with ceramic heat emitter. Ceramic heat, it kills the humidity, so I wouldn't do that. But low wattage heat bulb, if you need to get the temps up, yeah, go for it. Turn the heat melt element off at night, as long as the ambient temp does not drop below 65. Why am I in green with this one? Equip the habitat with two thermometers. Okay, never mind. I forgot about those stupid thermometers. At least use a digital hydrometer, which measures the humidity. They are more accurate, and they don't stick to your animal and, like, rip their skin off. I, I wouldn't do that, but I do think that you can get away without using a thermostat for Cresties if you have a very low wattage bulb and you are measuring it with, say, a heat gun. And I actually really like heat guns, but it doesn't hurt to have a thermostat, so. Normally, I don't actually use them for Cresties, though. And so, no. For more information, consult PetSmart's reptile and lighting and setting up reptile habitat at PetSmart.com slash terrarium. And then what should I feed my gecko? They're omnivorous. They get insects and fruits. True. The insects are gut-loaded crickets. Again, we prefer dubious, but... That works too. And then dust with calcium supplement two to times three weekly, blah, blah, blah. They also need a gecko powder daily. Again, uh, wait, they said multivitamin and calcium. Did it talk about spraying the enclosure? I, I try to spray them as often as possible to keep moisture on the walls of the enclosure because generally they really like to lick stuff and not necessarily use a water bowl. I don't think they mentioned that. So far, the only thing I disagree with is that, that they should have mentioned spraying and I also wouldn't use Reptile carpet and then the thermostat stuff. Obviously, that's a lot of things, but I'd say this is pretty pretty good all things considered especially due to the fact that they don't actually follow any of this care <laughs> in their own stores how can i keep my gecko healthy contact a vet or speak with that pet smart associate if they are hiding more than usual i still don't get that eating or drinking less it's hard to regulate how much they drink so as long as they don't look dehydrated if they're not wrinkly not losing weight swollen joints or reluctant to move discharge from eyes nose or mouth shedding problems discolored skin running droppings for more than two days decreased frequency and droppings increased basking time i still don't get that one Boom, 20 gallon. Why did they give Cresties more space than left? They say three Lepra Geckos in a 10, and then one Lepra Gecko, I mean one Cresta Gecko in a 20. So yeah, I agree. Screen lid, I'd say not always, but it does work. Oh, it actually doesn't say carpet here. Daytime heat, if it applies, fluorescent. Wait, did they mention UVB? Because for Cresties, they're nocturnal, so you don't need it. But a lot of people do use it. Two thermometers, hydrometer, yes, just a different kind. And then we've got hiding spots. Yeah, let's do that. Branches, yeah. yeah. Spray bottle for misting. It mentioned it here. Food bowl, yeah. Water bowl, yeah. Appropriate size cricket or insects. I mean, any insect, but yeah. Hide house, yes. Oh God, I agree with this one, almost. It's kind of surprising, honestly. So the verdict is these guides aren't terrible so far. These two, however, might be a different story on King's milks and ball pythons and corns. Gecko-wise, the crusty one is, oh, I, I forgot to rate it, duh. Based on average crested gecko care, I'd give this like an eight out of 10, I'll, I gotta be honest. So these together, boom, that averages out to a four out of 10 so far. <laughs> Would I buy from Petco or PetSmart? No. Would I follow this guide or give it to someone? Honestly, Okay, not this one. But honestly, for the crusty, I would trust a Petco or PetSmart more than 80% of breeders. Like, if you go to Repticon and you ask husbandry, usually people at Repticon are more either desperate or greedy or care less about what happens to the animal and simply want to get it out. And the best way to do that is tell them how simple it is, how cheap it is, how low maintenance it is, you can't complicate it for the customer because they might not impulse buy your animal. But pet stores like PetsCo and PetSmart don't rely on reptile sales and they don't need to aggressively push it like a breeder would. Because it's certainly expensive to breed and sell animals, but in many cases I think that buying from one of these stores, which I would never do, is still better than the majority of breeders, which is just depressing. So that's my thought. It gives you more insight on what I think of parts of the community. Um, these aren't long enough, I just realized. I apologize for that mistake. We've got our first two care guides down. If you enjoyed it, I'll do the two others as well. Um, and that'll be it for this video. <laughs> I'm Alex, and thanks for watching. And send something to my PO box if you want. Nothing illegal, preferably, but I technically can't stop. Nothing illegal. 
Thanks. <laughs> okay, that's it. Bye. Why did I say bye? I never say bye in videos. I take that bye back.